Welcome to this segment, which is focused on Quick 3D and our new digital cluster demo. My name is Sean Dorsey, and I'm a senior technical artist with the QT company. I've been with QT for about two years now, and I'm currently located in Detroit, Michigan. My background is in the software industry, as well as design, engineering, and high-end visualization. At QT, I specialize in the design studio application where I get to collaborate with R&D, sales, and services in all aspects from UI UX design to deployment on embedded devices. Joining me today is the extremely talented UI UX designer from Sealy, Mateusz, and I'll have him introduce himself. Thank you, Sean. My name is Mateusz Kocielas and I work at CNI Auto as a UX and UI designer, but my interest goes beyond design. My front-end developer experience helps me understand developers' problems and create high-fidelity functional prototypes. Of course, knowing how to code can be very useful, but if you want to work smarter, you need proper tools. Today, we are going to tell you about how we use the advantages of Design Studio to create the digital cluster project. We will introduce you to our approach to prototyping and show you how you can test the digital cluster project on your own computer. Thanks, Mateusz. As mentioned before, this session is dedicated to demonstrating the latest collaboration between QT and Sealy with the release of our new digital cluster demo. The goal of this project was to create a visually appealing automotive cluster utilizing many of Qt Design Studio version 2.1's features, and, and those include the quick 3D, HDR lighting, PBR materials, visual effects, and a lot more. I'll also mention too that this full project file is available for download now in our examples page within Design Studio where you simply uh, select it and download to your local drive. All right, Mateusz, let's dive into the project and highlight some of the key features by starting with the, the model of the vehicle. Now this model originated in Maya and it was optimized by reducing the polygon count to around 250,000 polygons. And it was grouped, so parts like the doors and the, and the wheels and the rear hatch could be rotated or animated individually. Uh, this is also where we originally set up our initial materials uh, that we have right now as fongs, but we didn't fully tweak them because we want that ability to fine-tune in Design Studio. Now, <clears throat> once that was all completed, uh, we exported the model as an FBX. Now, using uh, the settings here to, uh, you know, including things like lights and, and camera, in case I want to keep those in my, from my Maya scene and bring those into my design studio scene. All right, now I'll switch over to design studio and start a new quick 3D project application. Uh, name it something like a digital cluster. Okay, within the project file, first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this default uh, green cube item here. Go into my assets panel add in the FBX that I exported uh, from my directory. Right. Uh, this is the dialog prompt. Uh, I'm just gonna leave everything default for now, but you see there are a lot of options uh, to change your imported FBX. Now this is going to cycle through my uh, textures that were embedded to my FBX, as well as any lights and, uh, and cameras or animations that may have been added. My texture files have been added to my assets panel. Close this. 
right, now over my components, uh, you see now I have my 3D model added to my components window. I'm going to drag and drop that into my navigator. And now I have my uh, vehicle set up in my 3D editor. I'm going to take this time now to uh, pass it over to Mateusz. He's going to dig into it a little bit more. Hey, thank you, Sean. Let's now look at our file imported into the Design Studio and what we did to modify it a little bit so we could use it in our project. So we are now in this uh, 3D model QML file created during the import to the, into Design Studio. And you can see that it's divided into separate meshes and materials. So um, let me show you what we did um, in this file. First of all, uh, we decided to use principled materials for some materials so that it would be easier to um, create nice looking effects. As you can see, when you hover over uh, the elements in the navigator window, you can see <clears throat> what are the 3D models here or meshes and how the um, materials look like as well. Let me show you what we did with this body material, for example. If we click on this uh, element here on the material, we'll jump directly to this line of code which represents this principled material for the body. And we set a um, couple of properties here for this material. For example, roughness, base color, metalness, opacity, and so on. And we binded it to parameters set in the root node of this file. The root node is the mine element here. And if you add any property here to the root node, then you can directly change it in the component which uses the 3D model which is very useful, as you will see in a moment. Let me jump into the ADAS component, which uses the 3D model here. We are now in ADAS QML file. This is the component which stores all the information about the states uh, of our 3D model. So let me show you how it looks like. In the navigator tab on the left side, you can see the whole structure of this file. And there is one view 3D element, which includes scene environment information, two scenes, lights, camera, and 3D models. There's also our 3D model of the car. And because we added a couple of properties to its root element, they are available on the right side in the properties panel. So we can, for example, change its color using this color picker here. You can play with roughness, with uh, metalness of this material, as well as with a couple of different properties added there. We also use uh, HDR lightning, and we just use a texture here which has some information about the source. So as a source, we just added a HDR file. And then in our scene environment, we set the HDR light, which is the ID of the texture, as a light probe. And using the probe brightness, we set a proper uh, amount of light coming from this texture. You can also easily add effects to the whole scene. And I will show you how to do that really quickly. So our 3D model has a state which shows the front lights and we wanted to make it look a little bit better. So let me just quickly change the state of the lights in our properties of this car, we have a property called front lights and high beam. 
and currently these properties are binded to our faked uh, backend which stores information about if the lights are on or off we can quickly for just for the test change it to true and see that the lights are turning on but what about a nice looking bloom effect what we need to do is just to look for a bloom hdr bloom tone map which is available in components in cute quick 3d effects and when we just track and drop it into our scene environment it will automatically add this library if we didn't use it before and it will also add this hdr bloom tone map to the effect to the effects in our scene environment which is needed so that this effect will work so let's take a look what we can change here in this uh, bloom effect to see a change on the screen so first thing we can play with is uh, the bloom threshold parameter if we set it to something lower like 0 0.4 you can see that the amount of bloom is visible off on the screen we will set also the channel threshold to make the whole car a little bit brighter to also affect how much um, elements on the screen will be affected by this bloom uh, effect and we will set the blur fall off to 2 because in the real life the bloom effect is not so strong so now you can see that the bloom effect also affects the car body and this is because uh, our car paint is a little bit too bright or too intense and you can play with all the values with the material parameters with the lights and with effects to make a nice looking effect and one thing you need to remember is that when you use a state like we did now because we wanted to see the lights here for this effect when you change anything any property being in this state it affects only this state so when you check that the values you used are properly set then you should reset all the parameters you change in this state and repeat the steps in the base state let's now talk a little bit about uh, states in design studio and transitions you can easily use states in Design Studio to set different positions of the car, of the camera, and even of the materials used here. So for example, for this battery view, we change the opacity of car body. But we need something in between. We wanted to have a nice looking animations when you switch between the states. So to use that, you can easily use the transition editor which automatically will create um, transitions of the values you change in different states but in our situations situation we wanted to do a little bit more and for that we used a code editor which is available here and if you look in the code for transitions there are simply simple uh, sequential animations and property animation which are created automatically when you use a transition uh, editor here but you can also use script actions you can add if statements in the code to work with uh, timeline animations which we are also use in this project let me show you what is the result of this works. If we run the project, you will see that 
when we switch from the ADAS mode to, for example, lights mode, first the road disappears and then the car rotates and moves into its new place. You can also see that we use an animation of turning on and off lights, opening doors, trunk, moving back to the ADAS mode, and even showing the interior, changing the color and the brightness of the interior light. And we can also use in this project different um, colors for light mode. And I will show you how we did that here because it's really interesting part. Let me show you how we created uh, two themes for our project so that we could switch between dark and light mode and do that with the animation between these two states. So as you could see here in the project, when you switch between dark and the light mode, there is a small animation of the color when you look at the texts. And how we did that is very simple. If you look at the themes file in the imports folder, you need to switch to the text editor because there's nothing to see here. There are a couple of properties we set for global, as a global values for text colors and different uh, colors used in the project. And the uh, nice thing about this file is that it can also use states. And it has two states, dark mode and light mode, which we can choose when we bind values from the project to this file and in dark mode actually doesn't stores any values here it's the same as a base state and base state is set exactly here in this uh, root item so dark mode stores all these parameters which are set here but light mode has different values for light mode. For example, text, instead of being white, is dark or black in, in light mode. But because we use states here, we can also use transitions. If you look at the transition editor, you will see that this themes use transition, which goes from zero to seven, 750, which means it takes 750 milliseconds. What you need to do is to add all the properties you want to use in the properties here for the property animation element. You can use it, use the properties panel here to add them as well. And this way you can specify states even additional states in, in this file and you can use it to create additional um, themes for your cluster. That's great. Uh, Mateusz, uh, excellent work as always. I'd um, like to thank everyone for attending this webinar. Uh, have any questions, uh, we'll see you over in the Q&A section next. Thank you.